Hey everyone, my name is Gino Ramos. I'm the Senior Manager of Equality Programs here at Salesforce. And for those that are visually impaired, I'm a Filipino-American guy with short black hair and brown skin. I'm wearing a black t-shirt that says Equalidad, which is equality in Spanish. And I want to welcome you to another episode of Creating an Accessible Workplace with Ability Force. Today we're talking with my good friend Matt Nelson. Matt, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Gino. Nice to see you again. Um, so I'll, I'll follow your, your thread. Uh, so I'm a Caucasian male with slightly less hair than you, but I'm happy with what I have left. How about that? Um, I have five kids, so very much a family guy. Um, you know, I used to have hobbies, as I always tell people. I think now they, they're pretty centered around taking people to soccer and changing diapers and that sort of thing. So it's a good time. Cool. So in terms of your involvement with Ability Force as an employee resource group for people with disabilities, what's your involvement? Yeah, great. You know, one of the things that attracted me uh, actually uh, to the group was uh, we, one of our children, as I mentioned, we had five. Um, number four actually has um, a, a cognitive uh, disability. So um, he was something he was born with and he works kind of works through every day. Um, he's actually, you know, he, he, at, he actually, our, our family life is so crazy at times. He's so even keel. He's not too far up. He's not too far down. He kind of keeps us grounded and he's got so much uh, to offer the world. And so even though he struggles with things, you know, daily in, 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 in kind of his environment, how he, how he adapts and how he reacts, um, it's something, you know, I deal with as a father, obviously, and wanting to see him have opportunities that we all have, right, in those sorts of ways. And so just wanting to give back in some, in some, you know, form or another, that's really kind of what attracted me. Gotten directly like firsthand experience, um, being, being a parent. I love that. And then in terms of, you know, this world that we live in, in this corporate space, we do a lot of different presentations. You probably do like so many a day. I know I do so many a day. So, um, in terms of creating accessible presentations, what does that mean? Yeah, no, I, for the first question I ask myself is what what is a presentation, right? Because they come in so many different forms. It could be in person, it could be on video, like we're talking now. Um, and ultimately, in a presentation, you're typically trying to express something to an audience, right? And so, um, accessibility is important because if you're trying to convey something, all of us interpret things differently, right? And so, we all have something different that we bring to that conversation. And so, in the literal sense, you could think about, okay, what's the format of that presentation? You know, am I doing it via a PowerPoint or am I doing it on a, you know, a chart standing up in front of a room? Um, but it's how do you do that in a way that captures your audience to give them an opportunity to give you feedback in that environment, keeping it as open ended as possible and, and um, allowing as many people in the room to, to, you know, freely interpret what you're saying so that they can add back to the conversation is really important. Love that. And kind of you're, you're answering a little bit there, which is great in terms of creating an accessible presentation to create a culture of inclusivity. Why is that important? Yeah, I mean, what's actually really cool, right, is when you present something to someone, you are you actually want feedback, right, on what you're presenting. And so the more inclusive you make it, the more opportunistic it is because you can get more feedback from more people, right? So one really cool thing is you think about, you know, we go through the the, the ideas for how do you create a more inclusive or accessible presentation. Um, but one thing that hits close to home, just to give you a little example, because I, I always try to weave Tableau in some way. So I, I didn't probably mention that in my intro, um, but I actually joined Salesforce via the Tableau acquisition. Something really cool, really simple actually, but really cool about our product is um, when we first launched, you know, we did, there was a lot of studies. We use colors and visualizations. That's how we, how we show data. And something as simple as contrasting colors in a visualization. You think about people maybe with a color blindness, right? Um, orange and blue, as simple as it sounds, are actually two of the colors that you can put together uh, in the highest level of contrast for the most number of people. And so that was actually something important when we set the product up as to kind of what's the default setting, if you will, and what colors do we typically use in most presentations that we do display visually with data. Something simple, but, um, but just an example. That's, I'm trying to remember my grade school. Is it supplementary colors or is there another term for it? I feel like I don't remember, <laughs> exactly. but exactly that, right? And like in terms of other types of ways other than contrasting colors, for instance, what are some other things people can do to make their presentations more accessible? Yeah, I mean, as I think about, you know, we talked about a couple examples earlier. If, if it's if it's sharing a, a, you know, a PowerPoint or, you know, there's all sorts of technologies you can use, but something of the like, or even if you're displaying something in front of a room, something as simple as using a bigger font um, uh, you know, being more succinct, uh, in, in maybe the bullets you're using, 
Um, you know, if you have a lot of busyness on the slide, it can be really hard for the audience to figure out where you're trying to point them. In data visualizations, you know, we'll do actually something as simple as putting a circle around where I want the audience to focus. And that way I can do my talking points around something like that. Just examples, um, but. I'm going to take some of those because I feel like there's some that I really need to work on to make sure mine are there. But I feel like I, I've, I've taken and I've learned from a lot of people in Ability Force being succinct is very, very, very helpful because it's too much words on a presentation is just too much in general for a lot of people. So I love that pointer as well. Uh, any last words you have in regards to being more accessible when it comes to being accessible in the workplace? Yeah, no, I mean, I think I wouldn't I wouldn't say that we should stop right from an accessibility standpoint. I wouldn't stop just at the presentation level. We're presenting ourselves all the time. Right. Even if I'm not getting up to, to deliver a formal presentation, uh, anytime we're communicating with one another, you're presenting something, some sort of idea or asking for some sort of feedback. And so, again, just keeping it as open ended as you can, the way you frame questions even um, can actually be more accessible because you're allowing your audience to give you feedback. You know, as opposed, you know, open ended questions can be a good example of that. It's not actually how you render a slide, but being open in how you ask things so that you can allow your audience to formulate and give you, you know, more clear, or concise or even drawn out answers as opposed to just a yes or no question. So that's another example. See, such good tips and pointers, wise words of wisdom. Thank you so much, Matt. I appreciate it. And for those of you who turn, tuned in, thank you for joining us today. You're, if you're interested in learning more about equality here at Salesforce or what open roles we might even have for you, please visit us at salesforce.com backslash careers. We'd love to have you and join us next time for another episode of Creating an Accessible Workplace with Ability Force. We'll talk to another incredible colleague of ours from around the world. Thanks for joining, everyone. Thanks, Gina. Thanks for joining us. If you want to learn more about equality, like what we talked about today, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. If you click on that subscribe button to my left, you'll be able to get updates when content such as this goes live. Thank you for joining us on YouTube, and we hope to see you back here soon.